The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Lori Goodman, and Lori is the Executive Director of the Isla Vista Youth Projects. Welcome, Lori. Cinder, thank you so much for having me. I'm just honored to be here. Oh gosh, you know, you have a big story to tell, and I'm so eager to hear all about the wonderful things you folks are doing there these days. Well, thank you. Thank you. What can I start with? What do you want to know? Well, okay. So, Isla Vista Youth Projects. So, is this a preschool? What do you hope to accomplish in the lives of the children and the families? What are you doing there? Well, um, it is a preschool mm -hmm. and it's a family resource center. Ah. And we are an after school program. Oh, okay. And we are community convener. Oh. So, um, so we do a lot of things. What we like to say is that IVYP mitigates the effects of poverty, racism, and trauma by providing high-quality trauma-informed child care, okay. comprehensive, culturally sensitive family support, and mm. visionary community leadership. Wow. So that tells you our why and our what. Gee whiz, that's a lot. Yes, it is a so, lot. I want to know how, how in the world do you do this? How do you accomplish it? Um, well, we, we use all the strategies that we have, but we are um, experts in early childhood education. Okay. That yes. is our biggest program. And um, we, we do child care and preschool ages three months to five years at two sites in Goleta. Um, one on Phelps mm -hmm. near Costco and the other one on the West Campus of Isla Vista Youth Projects. And we're licensed for 140 students. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's a lot. That certainly takes a lot of focus. Yeah. We have um, a vibrant Family Resource Center. And Family Resource Centers are the jewel of our community and they're mostly under the radar people don't know what that there are family resource centers or what they do but they are um, intended to be places that strengthen families that you know every family can go through times that mm -hmm. are challenging and certainly the last two years have been remarkably challenging yeah. for families um, and resource centers are there to address their concrete needs like food or oh. unemployment support, help with housing applications, um, help get their children into preschool, okay. all of those things, but also help them um, live the lives they want to live. So we do parenting classes. We're oh. in the middle of a couple's That's class. Great. We've um, in the last four years done a lot around immigration oh. and we have um, monthly we were having monthly immigration webinars we would partner with immigrant hope and people could come and learn about what the latest laws are how to protect themselves uh. so whatever is up for the community that's what we're responding to we've done emergency fairs health fairs um, that it's very comprehensive work. In the last year, we opened the first and really only diaper bank in Santa Barbara County. Hmm. And that has been just meeting a, a need that's not covered anywhere else. So that's part of what a family resource center Man. does. Every family resource center is different, but um, 
you know, they reflect their own community. But there's a whole network of family resource centers in Santa Barbara County. Um, and then we, we partner with the Goleta School District okay. to do after school programming and support for students at three of the elementary schools. Mm. Um, Isla Vista Elementary School, Elwood Elementary School, and uh, not Elwood, I'm sorry, El Camino and La Patera. And so we're working with, with those students. We are supporting them. We're providing services to families, making sure they know of the resources mm -hmm. that are available to them. And we're really looking at um, stress busters. How do we strengthen children's social and emotional well-being? So our um, school-based case manager is doing a lot of mindfulness activities with children, really engaging in thoughtful questions. Oftentimes at school, there's such a focus on academics. Yeah. And we know that if children aren't okay in themselves, if they mm -hmm. can't manage their own emotions, they're not going to be yeah. academically successful. So we're, you know, whether it's early childhood, K through six, or families, yeah. We're looking at family well-being oh all gosh. the way across. And then, if that's not oh, enough, we, um, we convene an, something called the Goleta Valley um, Partnership Network. Mm -hmm. And that has been, um, for the last four years, an opportunity to convene all different kinds of sectors that operate across the Goleta Valley. So not just Goleta and not just Isla Vista, but we bring together nonprofits, the city officials, mm -hmm. the city council members, law enforcement, school district officials, healthcare providers, funders. Um, you know, so a really diverse group of people. And when we started coming together, it was to talk about trauma and mm -hmm. childhood trauma and how do we collectively as a community work together to prevent childhood trauma. And then there was a pandemic. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the theory around trauma is that we build resilience through relationships. And there's, a lot, there's research about parent-child relationships, but to extend that, we really thought, when we're talking about resilience, we're talking about not just parent-child, but all the adults in a child's sphere, adult to adult. People need friendships and relationships. Yeah. And then it's also the relationships between organizations. Mm -hmm. That if you want a community to be resilient, people need to know each other and work together yeah. and know what's going on. So when the um, pandemic started, we began meeting weekly. Wow. And I would have 30, 40 people show up and we would just share, here's what we're seeing. Here's what the needs are. Here's this trend. Where can people get food? When children went back to school, for example, in September mm -hmm. of 2020, it started coming up that we were seeing children didn't have um, a place to study. You know, they mm -hmm. in, in low-income families, it's often crowded in their homes. Yep, yep. And so children would be attending school from bed or from the floor. They're hunched over. They don't have a place to work. And um, someone said, boy, it'd be great if they had, if we could get desks. So we said, okay, we'll do it. And we raised some money and we purchased 110 lap desks for students. We oh. worked with the school districts to make referrals so mm -hmm. that um, if a desk was needed, we, we heard about it. We then, our Family Resource Center, advocates would then reach out to the family to make sh to see if there were other needs because oh, sure. if you need a desk um, that might be easy to ask for but maybe the teacher isn't seeing that there's food insecurity or maybe the teacher isn't seeing that the energy just got cut off so those are things then we would yeah. reach out and work with the family on and then we deliver the desks so that was just a tremendous success and just one of the many ways in which the Goleta Valley Partnership Network yeah. um, came together to meet the needs of the community. So that's what we do. We do young children, we do school-age children, we do families, and we do community, wow. the whole shebang. 
Sounds like you have your finger on the pulse of the community. That's our job. Yeah, yes. And you're making stuff happen. We are. We are. Now here, I heard a rumor. It's true. <laughs> that you're going to be changing your name pretty soon. Yes. So I, I've been the executive director for four years. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I started my job, I said to my board, tell me about Isla Vista. Are there children in Isla Vista? Are there families in Isla Vista? And they said, oh, yes. Yes, there are. That's who we serve. And I said, great. Um, but, but, you know, trust but verify. Uh -huh. So we, I did a, a geo-mapping of our clients. And I found out, lo and behold, that only 20% of our clients live in Isla Vista. Oh, wow. Now, that's most of the families in Isla Vista. So we're doing a great job serving the families in Isla yeah. Vista, but we are not limited to Isla yeah. Vista. So when we, and this hasn't changed. The, the geo map, when I, I continue to look to update, um, but about 20% of our clients live in Isla Vista proper. About 60% live in Goleta. And the remaining 20% come from all over Santa Barbara County. We have people from Lompoc, people from Carpinteria, many from the Santa Barbara area who will either bring their child to the Children's Center, maybe they work near our Children's Center, oh, 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 or they're making use of the Family Resource Center, they need food. And our advocates are so relational and so good that what will happen is they'll help someone and they'll call, they'll, when, they, when that person hears, oh, I need diapers, I need food, I need help with my, um, my unemployment application, they'll say, oh, call, call Anamaya at IVYP. She will help you. Yeah. And so then they come. Or no one else is doing immigration workshops. Yeah. So we have people, you know, from Temecula and, you know, wherever they hear about it, they can yeah. come. And that's been a wonderful outcome of the pandemic is, is many things are actually more accessible now. Wow. So it seems like I read somewhere that you're inviting people to help come up with a name. Oh, yes. That's where, thank you for but pulling me back on track. So yes, Isla Vista was not not the um, not the only focus. Mm -hmm. Youth. When I think of youth, I think of teenagers, and we really focus zero to twelve. And a project we've been in existence since 1971. Oh my gosh! We're not a project. No. We we're a real grown-up organization. <laughs> so as I say. Every name, every word in our name is not really accurate. And we decided we needed a new name. We needed a name that didn't constrain us, mm -hmm. um, but a name that gets at the essence of who we are and what we mean to the community. So we're just doing it. We've announced that we will change the name. We don't know what it will be yet. So we are asking people for feedback. We, um, we've sent out a, a survey mm -hmm. to everyone on our newsletter list, and we've gotten a lot of responses that are really gratifying. We've, I'm meeting with, um, with our students, with mm -hmm. our parents, mm -hmm. with our employees, and of course with our board members, mm -hmm. funders, and donors. And it's just, so gratifying and interesting to hear what people have to say. But what we've decided is that we want a name that um, is fanciful or suggestive, mm -hmm. not something that's going to describe everything we do. And you heard at the beginning of all the things we do, yeah, yeah. we would need a name that was two paragraphs long. Right, right. So what's at the root of that? At yeah. the root of who we are is a sense of belonging, a sense of, mm. a, of an embrace of the community, a sense of um, being seen and valued and cared for. 
So the name we're looking for is some word that gets at those feelings. Oh gosh. And it's fun to do Wait, this work. Yeah, exciting project. Yeah, so we, we are also having to, we're calling them creative conversations because okay. they're not really brainstorming All sessions. Right. They're just more efforts to sort of get at what those yeah. feelings are. Um, and then we can have this whole mound of data for the steering committee to mull over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully the magic will happen, lightning will strike, and we will have something new to present and to a new story to tell. That is so great. And while you're doing all this, I'll bet there are many people who would like to support your work and would go on your website and make a financial donation that just happens to be tax deductible. Yes. Yes, well, that would be lovely. Our website is ivyp.org. For now. Yes, <laughs> for now. Well, we'll be a, we'll be a DBA, so we'll yeah. probably keep that and have yeah. it linked yeah. to yeah. something else. Well, who yeah. knows what it will be. Um, but right now, it's ivyp.org. Uh -huh. And, you know, of course, they can make a general donation but they can also direct a oh. donation, for example, to our diaper bank. Oh, that's, that's um, great. You know, that's one of those efforts that doesn't have any kind of government funding behind it, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. We care about children and families, and we don't, we don't have, we have food banks, we don't have, we don't have diapers. There's no, yeah. no state funding yeah. for that. Um, they can direct it toward toward one of our programs, toward our Family Resource Center, or toward our Children's Center. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we like it best yeah. if you let us decide. Yes, of course. Because the needs keep changing. Yeah. OK, so um, on your, while they're on your website, they can also maybe find out um, if, about volunteer opportunities or about how to maybe get their children involved with your program and or their family. Yes, so if, um, if you're looking at our website and you want to volunteer, one of the places where we need volunteers frequently is our food distribution. So we do a monthly food distribution. We have you know, 400 people that will come through and collect mm -hmm. food every month, and that's a big physical effort. Yeah. So we need people really who are going to lift and schlep yeah. and hand out. Um, we're doing vaccine clinics right now oh, um, every three great. weeks. In fact, since October, we have partnered with um, with public health mm. to distribute over 2,000 vaccines. Wow. Uh, with, you know, now we want to get children 5 to 12, and, and hopefully mm -hmm. there will be a vaccine approved for those younger children. So I don't mm -hmm. see that work ending. And that's another big effort and a place where we can really just use some extra hands. Yeah. Um, we do like to have volunteers in our children's center. Once we get a little bit farther past this pandemic, mm -hmm. um, yes. of course, all volunteers need to be fully vaccinated. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Good. So, Laura, we have about a minute or so left. Oh, my what goodness, else? that went so fast. I know. What else would you like our audience to know about okay. Out of the Youth Project? I have two more things that I okay. wanted to tell. I cannot believe that went so fast. <laughs> so, one of the things that we have been doing in the last two years is we've begun to introduce our elected officials to mm. our community. So we had um, a town hall featuring Congressman Salud Carbajal. Mm -hmm. We had a town hall with, with Goleta Mayor Paula Perotti. Mm -hmm. The next one, we don't have a date for this, mm -hmm. is with um, Monique Limon. Mm -hmm. And these are bilingual, mm -hmm. they're virtual, and they're an opportunity for what is often a disenfranchised part of our community yeah. to lower barriers to, to meeting yes. their representatives. That's great. We also have our next fundraising event coming up. Oh boy. It's called the Leap Awards. And Leap. The, okay. the event is free and virtual. Oh. Because we want everyone to be able to attend, including our families, including our staff. 
Um, so it is a fundraising event, but you don't have to pay to come. And all you need to do is click from your computer. And this year we are honoring Monique Limone and oh. Ken Saxon oh. with our LEAP Award. And LEAP stands for Learn, um, Engage, Advocate, and Partner. Oh. And we think both of our honorees really embody those values and that those val values also reflect who we are. That is perfect. Oh my gosh. Well, Lori, thank you so much for your fabulous work that you're doing and that you're going to be doing in the future. And thanks for sharing all that with us today. Sandra, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.